All right, so we want to start off, or I'm going to start off, just by, number one, thanking all of you for being here. Because you know what? The wave is nothing without you. Our speakers today were absolutely phenomenal. We still have one more coming up after me. And, uh, and Brad was just off the chain, and, and you know, tomorrow's going to be even bigger. So I just want to thank you guys. Uh, I have a few people that I want to call up, a few uh, awards that we want to give out right now before I start my talk. And um, we're going to start with the first one. We have some philanthropy awards, because we've got a lot of great donors who give to our college, and I think they need to be acknowledged. So today, it gives me great pleasure to recognize three individuals, actually four, this one's a couple, who through their generosity and vision have advanced life west in our efforts to create a brighter future for humanity. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, administration, faculty, staff, and students, I'd like to recognize our first recipient of the Philanthropist of the Year Award, a dear friend of Life West, Mr. Jay Dollywall. He's the founder and CEO of Vox Life from Toronto, Canada. Let me just share with you before we, before we clap for him. Mr. Dollywall founded Vox Life to provide effective treatment for his mother who suffered from multiple sclerosis. The resulting human performance technology provides improved mobility and an increased quality of life for people throughout the world. Jay Dollywall founded his company on the Japanese principle of, I might get this wrong because I don't speak Japanese, Aikaji, which translates to reason for being. The four pillars of this philosophy are number one, offer the world something it needs. Number two, love doing what you do. Number three, commit to continual self-improvement. And number four, be compensated for doing so. Those familiar with Jay and his company can clearly see these concepts in action and the betterment of, seeking all, uh, of all seeking a better life. Jay is a generous donor to many causes that benefit mankind. At Life West, he and Vox Life have been supportive through the highly competitive and prestigious Vox Leadership Series Scholarship, which commits $10,000 annually in scholarships to students demonstrating motivational leadership impacting academic, world and community environments. Jay's support of this and previous waves as a platinum sponsor has been crucial to our success and national recognition. Now, I want you to know Jay isn't with us here today because he's truly, he's just, he's in, a, he's in an adaptative process right now, but he's doing better. But please just know in honoring Jay Dialwall as our first philanthropist of the year award, accepting Jay's award today is Dr. Mark De Brinkat from Vox Life. So Mark, if you'll come up, if you're around. Come on up, Mark, to Jay. Thank you so much. Good, Mark, this is for Jay. It reads, Philanthropist of the Year, presented to Jay Dollywell, Vox Life, in recognition of your tireless support for advancing excellence in chiropractic education. Life Chiropractic College West, Wave 2019. Give, do, love, serve. So thank you so much. You so much. If you'll give this to Jay for us, okay? Yeah, Great, appreciate it, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, next. Our second recipient of the, of the Philanthropist of the Year Award is Charlie Dubois, President and CEO of Standard Process. Many of you might not know Charlie, I want to tell you a little bit about him. Charlie started his career at Standard Process in 1983 doing various summer jobs, including hand weeding the beet fields on the farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin. Upon graduation from college, he joined Standard Process full time in 1989 as a plant engineer. In 95, Charlie was elected president of Standard Process by the Board of Directors. He represents the third generation of his family to own Standard Process. If you don't know this, Charlie is a generous supporter to many local and national organizations, especially the chiropractic profession. At Life West, he provided the lead gift of $500,000 to build the Standard Process Auditorium. Charlie has funded $150,000 of student scholarships through the Dr. Michael Dobbins Excellent in Nutrition Education Scholarship. He also provided $90,000 in continued support to, for our Life West Rugby program. Charlie's been a major sponsor of the Wave since 2013, and his continual support of Life West has impacted so many of our Life West family, our students, our staff, and our faculty. Charlie, 
thank you so much. So please join me in honoring Mr. Charlie Dubois as our second 2019 Philanthropist of the Year. Thank you, Chef. For you, Charlie. You. It says, Philanthropy of the Year presented to Charlie Dubois, standard process, a recognition of your tireless support, advancing excellence in chiropractic education, life cover at the College of West, Wave 2019. Thank Give, you. do, love, serve. You're welcome. Thank you, love Charlie, it. for Appreciate all that you do. It. Thank Thanks. you. Oh, yeah. Good. And now our last recipients which I'm thrilled to, to, to introduce to you, our final recipients of Philanthropy of the, of the, uh, of the phil, say that 20 times fast, Philanthropist of the Year Award are Dr. Karen Cole and her husband, Dr. Emil Glucker. Dr. Cole is a proud graduate of Life West class of 1987. She completed advanced training and, cert and certification in pediatric chiropractic and built a very successful pra private practice in the San Francisco Bay Area from which she is now retired. She specializes in the evaluation, care, and management of health and wellness conditions of infancy, childhood, and adolescence. Her husband, Emil, is a retired nuclear physicist and world-class runner and marathoner. They met through a shared love of running and have made friends worldwide and traveled often to participate in running events. Both doctors Karen and Emil were members of the committee that created the Life West Chiropractic Museum. Through Dr. Cole's generosity and vision, she and Dr. Emil are the first named individuals to our Guardian Society. Our Guardian Society members are individuals who include Life West in their estate planning. Dr. Dr. Karen and Dr. Emil have designated a planned gift of $250,000 to Life West in support of chiropractic philosophy and to support its growth and development. Please, please, please join me in honoring Dr. Karen and Dr. Emil as the final recipients of the, of the Philanthropist of the Year Award. Karen called me on the phone last week or two weeks ago and she asked me, I hope this doesn't embarrass you, she said, Ron, what can I do to give back to Life West? I said, Karen, you're doing so much. I mean, what do you, you know, she said, I just, I want to give back more. I said, like, what are you thinking of? And, and she said, I, can I come and proctor tests? Can I do something? at the college. I said, oh my gosh, of course you can. So we're gonna train her, she's gonna be our lead proctor. She'll be, and she's donating her, I'm just teasing, but she'll be there. And Emil, thank you so much, both of you. It says, it says, Philanthropist of the Year Award presented nice. to Karen Cole, DC, Emil Glucker, MD, in recognition of your tireless support for advancing excellence in chiropractic education, Life Chiropractic College of West, Wave 2019, give, do, love, serve. Thank you so much. Do the best. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Emil. Appreciate you so much. This is for you guys. Good, let's take a picture. Uh, up there, sure. That's okay. Okay. Oh, right, I'm here, right here. We can't see anything. There you go. Thank you guys so much. All right. So I want to share with you something if you don't know this. I just found out about two hours ago that chiropractic lost, lost a warrior, lost a hero, lost a mentor of mine, Dr. Nell Williams. Dr. Sid Williams' wife. And Dr. Nell just passed just today. She was the first lady of Life College, Chiropractic College, back in 1974. I guess she was the first lady of Life West because when Dr. Williams took over Life West from Pacific States before he gave the keys to Jerry Klum, that would automatically make her the first lady of Life West. And she was 93 years old. She was the most giving, loving, and serving person I think I've ever met on the planet, literally. She spent time at mine and Mary's house in La Jolla, California. Every time I'd see her, she'd ask me about what's going on in my house. She remembered everything you could think of. She's the most beautiful, generous person, and I think that we've lost somebody today that has etched 
something in all of our hearts, whether you knew her personally or you didn't. So if we could just give a moment of silence for Dr. Nell Williams. Godspeed, Dr. Nell. Thank you, guys. And I do want to introduce two people to you. Dr. Nell's first employee, first employee at Life College, I believe was the first employee, is a dear friend of mine. He's a dear friend of yours. He's one of the most generous people you'll ever meet also, and who loves chiropractic. It runs through his veins. It runs through his bones. It runs through his nerves. He is, he is, for every year that we could have, Mr. Chiropractic. I want to introduce to you and have stand up in the back of the room in the back left, the first president of Life Chiropractic College West, Dr. Jerry Klum. Stand up and give him a round of applause, please. I've got one more person I want to introduce to you, and I'm so happy to have him here today. He's a very dear friend of mine. He is a top class, first class person who is totally immersed in chiropractic education, totally immersed in moving this vitalistic movement that we have in chiropractic, the president of Life University in the back of the room. Stand up, Dr. Rob Scott. Say hello to him, please give him a hand. All right, now we'll move on. So let's talk about this, chiropractic, global outreach, and local outcomes. They got me doing CE, so I guess they got to do CE, but we're going to have a lot of philosophy in this too. Just don't tell the state board that, all right? Let's talk about, you know, today we're talking about salutogenesis. In fact, this whole program is based on salutogenesis, right? The creation of health, right? And when you talk about salutogenesis, and I got to tell you something, Peter Kevorkian, he laid it out today for us. Because this is where it's going. You gotta realize this, this is where it's going. It's not just the same old model of just people coming in and saying I'm in pain and we helping them, you know, us helping them and then they leave and then they come back when they're in pain or they use chiropractic, which is a great thing. If they're not doing well, that's a great thing, my gosh. It's wonderful, but you know something? Here's the thing, we gotta start going beyond that. And I'm gonna share with you today about the issues that are happening in Canada and the issues that are happening in Australia. And if we only had a, saluto, a salutogenic model for care, for the profession, and as right now we're adapting into life west the best we can, that salutogenesis is something that we're gonna be hearing more and more about because it's scientific, as Peter said. It's scientific. And as we move forward, we talk about creating health globally, right? Because that's really what we're about. Life West is about creating a brighter future for humanity. That's who we are. That is who we are. It's not just here in Hayward. It's not just in the Bay Area. It's not just in, in, in Los Angeles or in Salt Lake City. You know, it's not just in Boise, Idaho. It's everywhere. And that's what we want to do. But as we move forward, we start th seeing things, right? Because what's happening right now, whether you know it or not, we've got people in our profession that we call them, or I call them, the anti-neuro movement. We just have to educate them better about salutogenesis. But they want to take neuro out of neuromusculoskeletal. They want us to be musculoskeletal doctors. And I don't know about you, but you know, when I went to college, I learned my neurology, and I know that you don't know, well, I know the doctors know this, the students don't know this, that you will know neurology better than anybody. There won't be anyone out there that can touch your neurology because we do work with the nervous system. That's what we're working with. We know that, the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. And yet we have a group out there that wants to take away neuro. I mean, I just don't understand where they're coming from. I do know where physically they're coming from, but I don't know where they're coming from mentally, why they would want to take that and relegate ourselves. Look at the global landscape in Canada. Look at this, increased focus on care for musculoskeletal symptoms only. New policies preventing chiropractors from using testimonials about their care on websites and in social media. You cannot put a patient's testimonial on your website if you practice in Canada, especially British Columbia, and now it's happening in Alberta, it's happening, in, it's, just, it's just crazy. It's crazy, you can't tell people how chiropractic works. You can have a patient give a testimonial, unsolicited, 
But you can't put that on your website so others can see it because you know what they say? It's false and misleading advertising. You tell me what's false about somebody getting correction, you know, someone having health restored in their body, someone having their body regenerate itself, and it's false? To me, that's the most real thing in the world. And then look at Australia, an increased push for evidence-based care. And what they talked about today, evidence-based care isn't bad, but all they want is the research. They don't care about the patient values. They don't care about the clinical values. It's just the research. And if we don't have the research, then you can't do it. Which I'm going to show you a different, a different model in a second. And the Chiropractic Association working to leave behind vitalistic roots and pediatric care, uh, chiropractic care severely limited by new regulations. People, this is the world we're living in right now. It's hard to believe it's 2019 when we have people, when we have countries that are telling us we can't do these things. And it's not the countries, it's the people within the countries. And the model is broken, right? So I'm gonna share with you a video. What I did was this. We sent our video crew out to UC Berkeley, some of the brightest minds on the planet, UC Berkeley. And they asked them two questions. What is chiropractic? And do you believe the body can heal itself? Those are the two questions we asked. Take a look and hear what the brightest minds of this, genera this current generation, listen to what they had to say. Today I have one question for you. So what, what does chiropractic mean to you? Chiropractic. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think they're actual doctors necessarily, but they focus on pressure points and like joints as a method of like, like fixing pain like in your back and stuff. I don't really know much about it, but I think like uh, something to do with like your, your spine and your okay. neck and just kind of like alleviating pain or pressure from that area. Right, that's a really good answer. And what do you think? It's like same thing, like physical therapy. Do you believe that the body has the ability to heal itself? Um, yeah, I think it's been proven that the body does heal itself. It does? Whenever I think of like chiropractic or chiropractors, I think of like the people that like will like crack your back right. and like right. your neck and stuff like that. It involves uh, physical anatomy and okay oriental things. Right. Um, the practice of those things combined, I am not quite sure. Yeah. Chiropractic. You know, is this supposed to make Berkeley students look stupid? I just don't happen to be a pre-med. Um, when I think about a chiropractor, I just think about people like cracking your back and right. kind of just making it like breaking all the pressure points and helping it feel better. I feel like chiro like that whole like chiropractic stuff is kinda like it's different than like actual like medicine. It's kinda like its own little subset. I mean it might have some value, but that's just like my opinion. Do you believe that the body has the ability to heal itself? Like Wolverine? Uh not quite. I think that a chiropractic is someone that'll help you put all the muscles in a way that it'll interact well. One of the branches of the medical field that are important and that it will it will um, spark someone's passion, just not mine. Is when you go and they like adjust you right. to make sure that you're staying healthy. That's right. pretty much it. Have you ever to been be to honest. a chiropractor before? Um, no, I've been told I should go, right. but uh, no, never actually been because I always thought it was a myth okay. and it doesn't actually work. Crazy, huh? Interesting, isn't it? Listen, listen, this is Berkeley, California. And this is the model that, that people think we are in chiropractic. And then they come into our offices and we try to what? Bring them over to this other side. And we'll continue to do that. But this is the perception that people have of chiropractic. And you know where they get it from? Us. They get it from us. I'm not saying it's bad, but when you look at the perception, you know, years ago, you know, when everyone was in the yellow pages, I don't even know if they even have yellow pages anymore, but years ago, we used to list the 12 day, or the seven danger signals. That was in the like, late 70s. And then in the 80s, it became the 12 danger signals. In the 90s, it became the 15 danger signals. And we kept going on and on with this stuff, and that was the perception that we put out. Well, you know what, I think, 
that you would agree that it's time to change this. That we have to have people start understanding. We've always said in chiropractic, if they knew what I knew, they'd want what I want. And when we can start changing this model and having people understand that the body is a self-healing, self-regulating organism, that given the right internal environment, it will heal itself 100% at whatever that 100% is for that body. They will understand that within them is a power, and that same power that made their body heals their body. That if there's no interference, that their bodies will function to the best of its ability. That they will think clearer. That they will heal clearer. My dad is 93 years old. 93 years old. He's been under chiropractic care since he was in his 40s. My dad had a heart attack in his 40s. They said he did. They rushed him to the hospital. They gave him a bunch of medication. They monitored him, gave him a bunch of medication. He left. When we found out about it, we sent him over to a chiropractor in Detroit, Michigan, named Dr. Named Dr. George Goodhart. He's the father of applied kinesiology. He didn't see Goodhart, because Goodhart wasn't there that day, but he saw a guy named Walter Schmidt who took over for Goodhart. And what Schmidt did was this. Dr. Schmidt said, Marvin, you don't need those drugs. He said, just do this, got him adjusted, did whatever, gave him some things, whatever he needed to support his body. My dad went off, my dad was like clockwork. Whatever you told him to do, the kind of guy, he'd do it. If you told him to show up at 4.30 in the morning to get adjusted, he'd be here at your office at 4.30 in the morning, it's just how he is. He did all, everything he was told to do, never took one medication. He went back to the hospital doctor, went back to the cardiologist, six weeks later for a checkup. And they looked at him, they said, Marvin, you are absolutely phenomenal. Listen, whatever you're taking, these drugs, keep taking them, they're working. That's what he said to him. When my dad told me that, I said, Dad, did you tell him? Did you tell him you didn't take the medication? Did you tell him that, that you're just, you know, you got adjusted and you've been getting adjusted and doing it? He goes, nah, he was so excited, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. That's <laughs> what he said. And I'm going, oh man, what a missed opportunity, Ken, but you know what, it's okay. He's 93 years old today, well, he, he, this year. He's been 93 since May 16th. You know? And right now, his body's fighting cancer. But 93 years old, still drives, even knows how to use. I took, him, I took him a month ago, and I got him an iPhone, a new iPhone. He has the iPhone X. The gal sat with him in the iPhone store for three hours tutoring him on the iPhone. And he called me up last week and I said, what's up, dad? He goes, oh man, you're gonna love this iPhone when you get it. It's my dad. I gotta tell you something. He understands how the body operates. Adjusted every week for 40 something years, or checked at least every week for 40 something years. Gang, that's how we're supposed to live. And I pray and my brother who's in the room today, we pray that he just one, one night just doesn't wake up in the morning time. He's lived a beautiful life, a beautiful life. But he also understands this. He understands the value of his health. He understands, he didn't go to chiropractors because he wasn't feeling well for 40 something years. He went because he knew it was the right thing to do. That's why he went. And I truly believe that if he didn't go for those 40 years, the bladder cancer he has right now probably would have hit him when he, was in, when he was in his 70s. That's just my feeling. But I have to tell you something. We look at the salutogenic model enabling the body to create a healthier version of itself. Isn't that what you want for yourself? Of course it is. Isn't that what, what, what you want for your family? Of course it is. Isn't that what you want for everyone who walks into your office or will walk into your office? How do you message it? What is your message going to be when people come in, right? Talking about the creation of health or pain, sickness, and disease. It's okay. People are over here, and they're in this land of sickness and disease. That's great. Not great, but that's where, they're, that's where they are. We have to accept that. 
but we want to take them over this bridge to the land of milk and honey, over here to health and happiness and wellness. What's your model to bring them over? And here's our goal. Our game, guy, uh, our game is this. We walk one step ahead of them. We don't stand over here and call them and say, oh, nope, nope, that's not right, just like Brad said, you know. No, but. No, no, you don't do it. No, okay, but let's walk this way. We, don't do, we go over here, we pick them up, we walk this way, and we educate them along the way. It's the greatest thing that we can do. It's the greatest thing that we can do. And docs, I just want you to know this. The, the, the students that are in the room today, they educate a heck of a lot different than we were taught to educate. And it's absolutely incredible. I watch my daughters, my three daughters and their, and their husbands, all chiropractors, how they educate. And they're talking brain, they're talking all these different things and it's so cool what they're doing. But you know, we gotta get there, all of us. And we gotta create a model so people can start working within this model, right? Evidence-based model, let's take a look at this for a second, right? We got our patient values. And by the way, David Sackett, who designed evidence-based, uh, the evidence-based model, check it out. He didn't do it to support medicine. You know why he started it? Or one of the reasons he started it? He was tired of this aspirin a day deal. Everyone takes an aspirin a day. He said, well, why would you take an aspirin a day? So he started this thing and he looked at the patient values, right? Then he looked at the clinical values. Patient values are what your patients say. You know, hey doc, I'm responding. Hey doc, this is all this, whatever it is. Clinical values are your values as a chiropractor, whatever you use. Whatever you use to determine whether your patients are doing better or not, right? Hopefully they're physiological signs. Hopefully they're biomarkers, whatever they might be, right? Whatever it is, that's the clinical values. But what happened was they blew up the research values. They're all supposed to be even. They blew up the research values now and Sackett was pissed. Before he died, he was upset about this because they made the research the whole thing. And the reason they did that, at least Sackett believed, was because it would stop other people from doing something if you didn't have the research. Oh my gosh, Marvin, you can't go see a car, you shouldn't go to a chiropractor because you had a heart attack, because the research doesn't show that. Is that ridiculous or what? We have to wait for research before I can take care of somebody, but that's the evidence-based model. This is the same model they're using in Canada right now, same model they're using in Australia right now, same model they're using in Great Britain right now. And I have to tell you, this model doesn't work. And I'll show you why in a second, but it doesn't work. But this is what we're up against. If there's no research, you can't do it. When you, Heidi Havoc comes up here next, I want you to know something. When, when, when she, was with the, she was with us a couple years ago at the Wave when we had Dr. Bennett Amalu. He's the guy from Concussion. Will Smith played him in Concussion. And when Bennett Amalu's talk, afterwards we took him, we had a green room, and we had some people in there who got to ask him questions, and Heidi said, can I come with you? I said, absolutely, you, yeah, you have to come. You're a researcher, right? So she came, and she asked him a question in the audience. She asked him a question and said, you know, who was your greatest opposition? for the research, you know what he said? He's the guy who, who, who coined the term CTE, right? You know, NFL football players get hit in the head and their brains start, you know, CTE. Here's the deal, he said it was my medical friends, it was the medical researchers who poo-pooed him. You know what Heidi said? She said, I have the same thing. The people who are shooting down my research are the chiropractor, uh, chiropractors who do research. That's what she said. And she'll tell you that if you see her here. Chiropractic, because they're so stuck in this musculoskeletal model, not neuromusculoskeletal, musculoskeletal. And what the deal is, is this. All of a sudden, Heidi has this great stuff. Instead of rejoicing and going, oh my gosh, that's phenomenal, what they said was, no, let's see your research. That's not right. This isn't right. You can't get this. This shouldn't go through an IRB. None of this stuff should be happening. This is what she faces. Scrutiny. She faces people telling her that she's wrong and rejection from her own people in the research world. As Dr. An as Dr. Anker said today, they're not objective and research are supposed to be objective. These are the things that we're dealing with. This is evidence-based, but let's take a look at this. The myth of evidence-based practice towards evidence-informed practice. I have with me right in my hands here from the British Journal of Social Work, right? written by two people, 
both from Israel, a husband and wife. And in the abstracts, it says this. It says, in this paper, we analyze the five steps of evidence-based practice model and argue that this model has serious limitations, both theoretical and practical. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. I'm going to jump down to the middle of it. It says, evidence-informed practice, which I'm going to share with you in a second, should be understood as excluding non-scientific prejudice and superstitions, but also leaves ample room room for clinical experience as well as the constructive and imaginative judgments of practitioners and clients who, who are in constant interaction and dialogue with one another. What it's saying is this. It's saying, in a nutshell, that evidence-based model is the science of reducing quantitative evidence. I mean, it listens to statistics. Well, let me tell you something. You are not a statistic. You had a one in 400 trillion chance of being here today, of being conceived. And you tell me statistically that that's relevant. Listen, it's not. Listening to statistics is not patient care. Evidence informed is person centered, it listens to the patient, listens to the practice member. This is the direction we need to go. This is what we need to tell these guys and gals up in Canada who are doing this research, shutting down care for chiropractic kids. This is what we have to tell Australia. This is what we need to tell Great Britain. And I'm happy to do it. I want you to know something. Here's how sad this world is getting. We have, we have doctors here from Alberta, and they are not getting CE at this program, The Wave, from Alberta. Because we have a gentleman speaking on the program tomorrow, not even for CE, and his name is Del Bigtree, who's speaking on our program tomorrow, and the, the, the court or whatever, the, 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 I don't know who's in Alberta who judges this stuff, the College of Alberta you know, for chiropractors said, because he's on your program, we won't give credit for any of this other stuff that you're doing. That's what they're doing to our chiropractors. People. We need to change. We need a new dialogue. We need a new conversation. We need to make sure that people understand what we do. And what we do is scientific. What we do is relevant. What we do does have patient values. What we do is also clinically validated. And when we get to that point, things start to happen, right? The evidence-informed model, research values, clinical values, same as the other, but puts heavy weight on the patient value. That's the model I want to use. Because you know what? If my patient walks in the office and says, Doc, i got to tell you something. I don't know what, but I haven't had my, no, no allergies this year. And actually, no allergies last year since I started care. Boy, I might not be able to scientifically validate that with a double-blind research study, but it certainly sounds like their body is healing. Do I have to walk around and tell someone who couldn't get pregnant for years and years and years, and all of a sudden they're under chiropractic care, and they get pregnant like that? I don't know but something changed within their body. The body is a self-healing, self-regulating organism given the proper internal environment. Can I scientifically have to show that every single time in order to validate chiropractic care? Listen, we as a group, we as a profession, we right here as a vitalistic community have to come to grips with what we're dealing with and being able to stand above it and let people know what chiropractic is and how chiropractic works. And that the body is better without interference. The body functions better without interference and we're all about function, just where we are. So we go around the world at Life West, right? We're in India, we're in Tonga, right? We're bringing chiropractic to the world. And it's really cool. In India, they have less than 15 chiropractors serving 1.3 billion people who are registered and probably another 1.3 billion who aren't there's over probably 2 billion people in India, and I probably, they probably passed me on the road three or four times when I was there. But I have to tell you something. We do a job in India that's absolutely incredible. Now we're in Tonga, zero chiropractors serving 100,000 people on the island, the main kingdom island, right? Another 40,000 on a different island. And 97% of all people born today are born in developing worlds. And they don't, most of them, don't have chiropractic care. That's why Life West is going to these places, because we want to deliver chiropractic care. We want to start a conversation and start a message. But you know what the cool thing is? We just opened our first clinic, as Dr. Nanda said this morning. Life West opened a clinic in, in, in India, in Delhi, India. 
I've got three graduates, recent graduates, just graduated last quarter. Two are there, one's getting there in, in, the, in probably the next couple of weeks, or maybe she's there right now. They were open for a week, they had their busiest day. Last week I got the statistic after being open for a week, they saw 27 people in one day after being there for a week. They're open five days a week. They are gonna be seeing hundreds of people, hundreds and hundreds of people a day. They probably can't process them fast enough. And understand this, the healings that they will have and the power that starts to happen and it gets turned on inside these people's bodies is something that all of us understand but should always be able to witness, right? When you look at India, or I'm, I'll take you to Tonga first. This is Tonga, and by the way, in Tonga, I'm flying out to Tonga in about a month or so. I'll be meeting with the Minister of Health there, which he's a friend of ours, he's been to the college, and I'll be going there for one sole purpose. Besides, we have a group going there for a service trip. We're gonna meet with the Minister of Health because we wanna establish a clinic in Tonga. And so I'm gonna talk to him about it. And we wanna establish a free clinic in Tonga where we send our preceptors and our graduates over to Tonga to take care of the beautiful people of the island of Tonga, the kingdom of Tonga, and deliver chiropractic care there, right? But I wanna share with you this. This is something that happened. Dr. Michael Moore, who's in the room here with us today, he went on a mission, he went on a service trip with us uh, two service trips ago, right? And Dr. Michael and I have known each other for many, 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 many years. And his daughter just graduated from Life West, so he went over with his daughter and his wife Donna, who's here, and they just went there to serve with our group. Right? And this is Eugene. And Eugene was told he would never walk again. In fact, when Eugene came to see Michael, he had a bag attached to him, and it was a, 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 a urinary bag, and he just had no function, wasn't able to walk, wasn't able to do anything. And so Michael, Dr. Michael Moore took care of him. Didn't treat a symptom. All he wanted to do was remove the interference. He removed the interference, and by the way, Eugene, the way he got like this, he fell out of a tree. And they told him he'd never walk again. I want to show you a video right now. So I went back three months later. By the way, when, Mike, when Dr. Moore was done seeing him after the third day, he was already starting to get up and move a little bit and that kind of stuff. I mean, this is the kind of healings that happened. Let me show you what I saw when he came in because Michael called up my, my wife, Mary, and said, Mary, will you take care of Eugene when he comes in? He told him all about what he was doing and all this stuff. Check out. Here's Eugene right now. Look who's here for you, Michael. <laughs> Look at that. Watch this. He's moving. Oh He's... my gosh. Look at that. The arms. Boom. Beautiful. He's coming back this afternoon, Michael. We'll keep sending videos. That's the power of chiropractic, but here's the thing. So Eugene can walk right now. By the way, then he came in and said, hey, yeah, you gotta work on my shoulders. Seriously. Here's the thing with Eugene. Yeah, he, Michael said to me, was he, did he sell the bag? I never saw the bag. He didn't have one. I wasn't there at the time when Michael was there, when Dr. Moore was there. But here's the thing with Eugene. We got his power turned back on in his body, right? His body starts healing, starts functioning. What was going on with the other parts of his body? We know his bladder's working now. We know he can walk. How about his lungs? How about other parts of his body as he starts to regenerate and make himself healthy? This is the power of chiropractic. It's about turning the life force on within somebody and allowing them to be the very best that they can be. This little boy, this was an India service trip about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. If you see the way he is right now, when he first came in, he saw my wife. You couldn't see his pupils. This was on the second day. His pupils were rolled so high up, all you did was see the whites of his eyes and obviously he couldn't see. And he came to see my wife and she saw him every day, maybe twice a day. And by the end of the, by, by, after three days of serving him, his pupils were back right in the center, total vision, working phenomenally. Now, we, I, tomorrow we'll be able to ask Dr. Ted Carrick what were the neurological pathways and how this works, because he knows that stuff. But understand this, that without an adjustment, it's not the power of the adjustment I'm talking about. Without an adjustment, without a chiropractor there to serve them, he would still have his pupils rolled up in his eyes. That's what we're talking about, taking chiropractic out to the world, right? This is VJ. 
VJ arrived to, our, to, to the mission trip that we had, the service trip that we had, with no feeling in his arms and legs, three weeks after having cervical injury. There was a riot going on in India, and his brother was going to participate in the riots. And to stop his brother from participating, because his brother would have got killed in the riots, to stop him, he ran his car into a wall, and he broke his neck. And they actually took out his vertebra, to his vertebra. And they said he and was paralyzed, pretty much laying down. Couldn't do a thing, right? They brought him in a van. Two of our doctors from Canada, Dr. Gina and Dr. Vikas, were taking care of him. They came in to get me the first day and said, said Ron, can you come and check his atlas? I went, so I went out and checked his atlas. I went from one side of the van, the door was open, to the other side over here, check this side, went over here, check this side, right? I had a, I had a thermal focus. And as I checked his atlas, I saw he had a right atlas. And all I did was just use an activator, and I just put my baby finger right on the atlas, adjusted it, and right away his left leg, his left foot, started going like this. So we knew there was a connection. So we got him over to the intensive care ward. We got him a bed. He was in the bed. They checked him every two hours. Not necessarily adjusted him, but every two hours for three days they checked him, right? Every two hours for two and a half more days, right? And as he started to come through, start, things started changing. Next thing you know, he's on his way home three days later. He's sitting up. He was moving, walking, doing all kinds of things. They put the brace on because it was going to be a bumpy road. His life was changed, but not just his. He had kids that were there who were around his bed every day. His wife was there. A guy who came in almost unconscious, certainly they had no life in his body, left smiling, happy, just from having chiropractic care. Gang, there's something bigger at play here than you and I know about. There's something bigger at play here than we could ever imagine. And you know what? Our body's ability to heal is far more greater than we can ever know. It's just that. He's a new man, right? At Life West, we respect the power of the chiropractic adjustment because that is what chiropractic is. It's the power of the chiropractic adjustment. And as we start to move forward with the adjustment, we start to make changes throughout the world. It's a ripple effect, right? This is our clinic now that we have. These are our doctors uh, right over here in the front row. Um, and it's just a beautiful thing. And they're just seeing people like crazy in India. It's just what we're doing. But check it out. When you go outside in our booth, you'll see that we have our new Life West magazine. It's called Achieving Wellness. It's validated vitalistic chiropractic around the world. We did a piece uh, before that on subluxation whether we should keep subluxation. In the fall, we're coming out with our next magazine, our next magazine, and it's gonna be all about chiropractic research and validating chiropractic, right? Because when you look at chiropractic research, you look at Deed Harrison, a Life West grad. This guy's doing amazing research right now. Amazing research in Cairo and different places, right? Inclusive up in original spinal rehabilitation procedures, publishing multiple studies in respect to public. Heidi Havoc, who will be speaking next, right? Award-winning research study side effects of adjustments of subluxation, somatosensory processing, all these things with the frontal cortex she'll be able to talk to you about. There's great things happening. We need to do more. You heard me speak last year. We're already starting our research projects right now. We're starting our telomere study right now, right? We're, started, we're doing heart rate variability. We're actually working with Barcelona College. They want to work with us, and we're going to do studies together with them, right? And we're also sleep studies because sleep is such an important issue. Please, if you want to get involved in this research, don't just sit back. Get involved. All you have to do is this. We're going to give you an invitation. When you, when you walk outside and go by the booth right out here, when you walk right out after you, get, after you get scanned out, you can see one of these green forms. Fill it out, put it in the box, and become a research study. Have a telomere study done. Maybe get involved with heart rate variability. Heart rate variability, we have NUCA who wants to get involved with us. We're going to get all the other techniques involved so that they can start doing these things, and we'll collect the data, and we'll be able to show exactly what's going on. Heart rate variability shows you what your autonomic nervous system is doing. It shows you how chiropractic works. So look for the sign-up sheets if you want to get involved. Don't just go, yeah, well, I'll let someone else do it. Here's the thing. If we get involved and we make differences here, and we start getting this research out, we're going to start changing the paradigm of health. I don't care about Canada. I don't care about these other places. I'm talking about what these students at Berkeley will know is this. When you say, what's chiropractic? They're going to go, oh my gosh, chiropractic. Chiropractic adds years to life and life to years. Chiropractic takes my autonomic nervous system and keeps me healthy. Chiropractic is about creating a lifestyle where I'm healthy and I'm well, physically, mentally, and socially. 
This is what we want to start getting our message out to, because vitalism equals life, right? And when, as you saw before, one of our speakers before talked about adaptation, homeostasis, right? Response, growth, organization, reproduction, metabolism. All of these show us that we're alive. But they're all working off the same system, and that's our nervous system. That's our nervous system. When you start looking at this, look at what Webster defines, defining vitalism. The function of a living organism are due to a vital principle distinct from phys physiochemical forces. Or two, the processes of life are not explicable by, by the laws of physics and chemistry alone. And that life is, is in some part self-determining. B.J. Palmer knew this. Here's what he wrote in our masterpiece. After birth, every function in that baby and all people was the results of the same innate, inherent or born with, intellectual law at work directing each tissue, cell, every bone, every organic structure, all were, or all were coordinated by the same law flowing from above down, inside out. He wrote that in our masterpiece. The word vitalism wasn't even around, but he wrote that. That is the chiropractic doctrine, gang. Every single one of us has that within us. Let me show you a video. It's a beautiful video. We put this together over the last two weeks. It's called In the Name of Love. I'm going to have you guys dim the lights when we do this, okay? Just feel this video. Don't just listen to it, but feel it. Here we go. Can you turn the lights down, please? Why is the planet and her people in such disease? Can you imagine a world with less pain, less suffering, less violence? where people engage in civil discourse rather than their fists. That speaks wonders. I showed that to people, they were crying when they saw it. The, the man who made this, Puya, who, who, who puts my videos together, he was so excited, he was up till four in the morning during midterm week, every day, working on this video. You know, it's interesting. The power of the chiropractic adjustment is greater than you and I could ever, 
ever imagine. So what's your why? What's your why? We talk about this often at LifeWest. We talk about this often when I travel. What's your why? See, my family is my why. It's one of my whys. And when we, when, as we raised our kids, we talked about what our why was. That the spirit is first, family is second, chiropractic is third. But the truth is, is that they're all the same. The truth is, they're all circled together. Because my family is chiropractic, the spirit is chiropractic, and chiropractic is my family. Think, feel, touch, smell, all your senses on what we do every single day and where we're coming from. There was a point in my life and my career as a chiropractor, and I'm still a chiropractor, but as a practicing chiropractor, where I realized that the relationship between me and the person in front of me was vital to the healing process. See, I always knew that you know, I could have an affinity. But when it really hit me, that when I closed my eyes and I delivered that adjustment and I felt that force go into their body and I could see their body just light up with my eyes closed, in that split second, I knew the connection was there. Peter, Peter Kevorkian talked about the connection today. He showed that video of people looking at each other. It was powerful. The connection is what it's about. We are connectors. We allow people to be reunited, man and woman the physical with man and woman the spiritual. We allow this universal law to take place. We allow that baby who will be in your hands within the next day, the next week, for some of our students, maybe the next year, that when you put that light force into that baby's body and it's in a colicky state that it just all of a sudden just releases and becomes one with who they are, that is healing in motion. That is what we do in chiropractic. See, I think our chiropractic colleges, every one of them should have waiting lists to get in if they, everyone understood what chiropractic is. But I will tell you this, the way we're gonna take it over, the way we're gonna change this health cycle and this, this evolution of craziness that's happening in our health worlds right now with the drugs and insanity that is going on, and believe me, I don't think drugs are bad. I was, you know, they're needed, of course. The way we're going to change it is through a different model. And that model is through health. That model is through healing. That model is through salutogenesis. And that model is about telling the truth and explaining to people that they are far greater than what they were led to believe. And it all comes from us. So when we get together and we start making that happen, then, then we'll start seeing this shift. But it's shifting already but it's gonna shift even more. And doctors who are here, I want you to know something. I used to worry about our profession. What's gonna happen later on? This was 10 years ago. I've been in the college for two years, you know, about two years and eight months, two years and nine months. And I watch our students and I want you to know something, I don't worry at all. Our students are dedicated. They understand give, do, love, and serve. They understand the chiropractic adjustment. They understand the body. And I want you to know something, they are so, powerful in what they do. When we take them to mission trips and service trips or I get to see them working, you wouldn't know if they were a, if they were a DC or a student, you'd have no idea. These students are literally gonna save the planet and they're educated and they understand how to communicate. So don't worry about it. What we do is we need a lot more of them to go out there and take care of the masses. And we will do that because chiropractic in its rightful place will always be on top. I want to read you something before I end today. It's a quote from one of my heroes in life. Martin Luther King, I studied all of his work. I watched the video series, Eyes on the Prize, about 15 times. And Martin Luther King wrote something 
on April 3rd, 1968. He was in Memphis, Tennessee. And here's what he wrote. Or here's actually what he said. He gave a talk. He said, we've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. I won't mind, like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. That's that land of health. That's that land of understanding that there's a power within our bodies. So he goes, so I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. And he ends it with, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He wrote that on April 3rd, 1968. On April 4th, 1968, Martin Luther King had a premonition and all of his cohorts around him, Stokely Carmichael and all these people who were with him in this peaceful movement to bring about change in the American culture, didn't want him to go out, didn't want him to speak that night, didn't want him to leave. And he said, I am walking out. And he went out on his balcony and it was that exact time that James Earl Ray shot Martin Luther King and killed him. But Martin Luther King left us with those words, those words of hope, those words that we are at the mountaintop, those words that he has and we have seen the light, those words that we're not fearing anybody because we are going to the promised land, we are going to the top. Our eyes have seen the glory and chiropractic is on the other side of that hill. So I want you to know something, as I stand here today with you, that we are making a difference, that everything you do every day in your office is making a difference. Every student, every test you take is making a difference that gets you to the place that you are gonna go out and change this world with your hands, with the knowledge base that we take from all the speakers here and elsewhere. We are the world and we will make the difference because we are the profession to do that and it's beautiful.